What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to part five of our uh, Dominary set review here on YouTube or Twitch, wherever you're viewing it. Uh, also, I do have a Patreon, so be sure to check that out if you guys are interested in supporting me or my Twitch channel or my YouTube channel in any other way. I uh, got some sweet reward tiers. You can check those out. And we have had uh, parts of this set review go up every day at 9 p.m. Eastern until until Friday when the set comes out so you'll have uh you'll have my thoughts on every color and every card in dominaria up until that point so today we're gonna go for the green and we're gonna start with adventurous impulse look at the top three cards of your library you may reveal a creature or land among them and put it into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in anywhere okay so we've seen this a million times right this is just like commune with nature or what's the other one aren't there more like this seems fine um, I don't know. It's, I could see it being played, right? Like it's, uh, it, it, if you tack on the, the cost of, look at it, let's, let's, let's use Frost Titan, a card we just used, uh, uh, it just played as an example. Um, Frost Titan, what if it said Frost Titan? What if it was just regular Frost Titan? But then it said Frost Titan, you may pay one more for this and cast it if it's in the top five cards of your library. That's an interesting way to look at that, right? And that's basically the same thing. Uh, this is top three cards, so we'll say top three cards. That is worse. Commune was top five. I don't know if I like this being three. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. That's all I got. That's all I got. I don't know if it's great. It's not great. I don't know if it's playable is what I'm getting at. If it's any creature for one mana... Um, yeah, I guess that's true. That is a good point. Whereas Commune with Dinosaurs only hits dinosaurs. It's oath, it's an Oath of Dissa. That's a good point. It can't hit Planeswalkers, though, which is relevant for me. Ancient Animus. Two mana. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control if it's legendary, then it fights. This is just your typical fight card in the set. It's probably very good. Hmm. Also an instant. This, is, this stream is not sponsored by Diet Sunkist, by the way. Just so you know. Not sponsored. I just enjoy it. Um, this card's great. You're not going to be playing Constructed, but you will pick it highly unlimited. Arbor Armament. One mana. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. That creature gains reach until end of turn. Yeah, that's pretty bad. The counter sticks around forever, which is nice. Like, that's a good... That's a good... It's a good perk. Uh, the nice part about Ancient Animus is that it does fight no matter what. Keep that in mind. Um, so you put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature if it's legendary. But it does fight no matter what. So it's always going to be a fight card. It's always going to be a pounce. Uh, whether it's a stompy... What's the, what's the card called? Dinosaur Stomp? Whatever that card was called. Um, whether it's that card just depends on whether you have a legendary guy. So, uh, Bailoth Gorger. Four mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, that's a standard rate. You will always play this guy unlimited. This is a, it's a strong common. A four 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 that does more. It's a it's a four 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 or a seven seven for eight. This card's great. Four 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 four. That's gas. Like if if you guys weren't familiar, which you probably are, if you're watching this, uh, Exelon and Rivals of Exelon both had both had three fours for four. Grazing Whiptail and the other red idiot. Um. So I mean, just having this at common is pretty good especially because it's an upside like that's crazy this is a very strong common broken bond most of my so most of the reviews i'm doing are if i talk about a card <laughs> like bailoth gorger and i say it's good i'm talking about limited i uh, you will know specifically if i'm talking about construct it should be pretty obvious broken bond two mana destroy an artifact or enchantment you put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield that's interesting so it's a it's like naturalized slash explore that's pretty cool um, I don't know if the sorcery speed is actually, so this is a lot of, this is an interesting card. Um, for one thing, I don't know if the putting it into play, putting a land into play is better than it being a, an instant, right? Um, the putting the land into play is cool, but it's only relevant if you're playing this on like turn two or three or maybe four. So it depends on when they actually... <laughs> Oh, Diet Sunkist, $95. Happy to sponsor such fine content. Enjoy your Diet Sunkist. Wow. I didn't know Diet Sunkist was its own company. I thought they were just under the Sunkist. 
uh, umbrella, but I mean, who knows? I, I guess you learn something every day. That's weird that diet sodas have their own their own companies. Uh, I thought they would just be under the regular company, but so I think this card gets worse the the longer the longer the game goes. Like if if on turn two they have a cool enchantment or an artifact that you want to kill, um, cool. Like then 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 you're just ramping. But usually if they're playing the torrential gear hook on turn six, not only does it benefit you to kill it at instant speed, um, you also don't care about putting your eighth mana into play, your ninth mana into play. So um, I, I think this is just worse than a card like Naturalize or even like Appetite for Destruction or whatever the whatever the one is that gains you two life. Any of the other alternatives I think are, are better right now. But, you know, I like having the option. Uh, Corrosive Ooze, two mana. When it, when it blocks, it's a 2-2 two, two for two. I like those are solid stats. Grizzly Bear's all around in this set. Whenever it blocks or becomes blocked by an equipped creature... Uh, destroy all equipment attached to that creature at the end of the turn. So, clearly an equipped creature is never blocking this. Um, but you might be able to... I mean, and they're just not going to attack into you. That's pretty much... This is just a 2-2 with no text that says... Equipped creatures can't attack you until you deal with... Until this is off the battlefield. That's, that's literally what this says. So. Unless, of course, they have flying. Or pro green. So, otherwise... Whatever. Elfheim Druid, uh, two mana for an O2. Tap to add a green, tap to add a green, green. Spend this only mana to ca only cast kick spell. Ah, this is pretty good. This reminds me of Devoted Druid a lot, obviously, because it's two mana O2 that adds green. And it can add two green if you need to. Unfortunately, they fixed it so that it, it adds it only adds double green to kick spells. But that's still pretty good. I mean, it's not terrible. I can see this finding a home in Constructed. Like, ramping, ramping mana is good. I don't know if you guys knew that. Fungal Plots. Two mana. Exile a creature card from your graveyard. Okay. Two mana. Create a 1-1 one, one green sapper link token. Okay. Sacrifice two sappers against two life and draw a card. My only concern with this is that it's it's not only exiling a creature, which is very specific. It's exiling a creature from your graveyard. If this is exile a creature from any graveyard, that would be amazing. If it was exile a card from any graveyard, that might be too strong. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, th this card seems a little too narrow. Unless you're able to, like, really fill up your graveyard. And even then, you're paying two mana per 1-1, one, one, which is not great. Gaia's Blessing, a classic. Two mana. Target player shuffles with three target cards from their graveyard into their library. Draw a card. When Gaia is great, when Gaia's Blessing is put into your graveyard from your library, shuffle your graveyard. This is uh, this is wh what we used, kids, before we had Eldrazi that could reshuffle our libraries. Yeah, and I agree. This is a fine filler card for limited. Um, you just put it in your deck. You'll make a you'll make a few one ones per match. It's totally fine. Gaia's Protector, four mana for a four two. Gaia's Protector must be blocked if able. Yeah, well that's not going to be a problem. This format is ripe rife with two twos, so you're just going to be like, all right, I'll kill your guy. Thanks for playing. Gift of Growth. Uh, one in a green, kicker two. So, untapped target creature, it gets plus two, plus two. If the spell was kicked, it gets plus four, plus four. So, you're getting plus two, plus two for two mana, or plus four, plus four for four mana. It's a fine trick and limited. Uh, being able to untap your guy and give it plus four, plus four means you're probably killing anything that's attacking you. So. Grow from the ashes. Search your library for three mana. Search your library for basic land card. Put it on the battlefield. So, it's basically like... Search for tomorrow, uh, beneath the sands, whatever. Then shuffle your library. If the li if the spell was kicked, so if you pay five for it, you can search for two basic lands, put them on the battlefield. That's not bad. Um, I like playing this on three, going to five, going to four, and then on turn four, playing this for five, and then going to eight on turn five, if my math is correct. Grun, the Lonely King. 5-5 five, five for 6. Pretty standard. Ape Warrior. That's pretty cool. Uh, if Grun, the Lonely King, was kicked, it enters the battlefield with 5 one, one counters on it. So it's a 5-5 five, five for 6 or a 9-9. Nine, nine, or a 10-10 ten, ten for 9. Whenever it attacks alone, double its power and toughness until end of turn. Huh. So for 9 mana, you get a 10-10 ten, ten, and then you double its power. So it's a 20-20 if he attacks by himself when he's kicked. That's pretty hilarious. 
I don't know what to say about that. Oh, wait, hold on. These are not tapped. That's pretty insane. I didn't realize that. Ooh, boy. Ooh. You know what they say about Grun, right? Um... Yeah, this card's insane. I don't. I mean, like, it's good. I mean, I don't think it's going to see any constructed play because he just dies to everything. Oh, I hate being that guy, right? Um, but this card in limited needs needs to be dealt with. So, um, yeah, the volume. Is, well, it's because it's from a different. I don't know. Um, I don't know why that didn't register, but whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. Kamal's Druidic Vow X Green Green. Legendary Sorcery, so you have to control a Legendary Creature or Planeswalker to cast this. Sounds fine. Uh, look at the top X cards of your library, so we'll say five, right? We'll look at the top five cards. For seven mana, we're looking at five cards. You can put any number of the land and or Legendary Permanent cards with converted mana cost seven or less among them. Well, five among five or less among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest in your graveyard. So this is just Genesis Wave for lands and Legendary Creatures, Legendary Permanents. Okay, this is actually pretty sweet because this is kind of like a deploy the gate watch type card. Um, I'm actually kind of also okay. So someone had Grun attack and fling. I kind of like that a lot. I'll attack with my. Well, I mean, like at that point you're spending eleven mana, so it's not like a really early play either. You play Grun for nine on turn ten. You're attacking with Grun by himself, so he's a twenty twenty, and then you fling it. There's a lot that can go wrong there, but um, still pretty. I like the idea. I like the, the thought behind it. Um, hey, what up, Chris? I kind of like this card a lot, actually. Just because I really like to pull the Gatewatch. I like Super Friend strategies. And I like just filling my deck with Planeswalkers. And then just playing this for, like, 8 mana, right? Looking at the top 6. And then putting all Legendary Creatures, Lands, and Planeswalkers in the top 6 into play. I think that's pretty sweet. I think this card could definitely find a home. Especially if there's cards like this in the format. Or... You, you get the other the other elf. You get the point. I'll have to go back through all these guys. Crossan Druid. 2-3 three for 3. Alright, so when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you gain 10 life. This is actually really relevant. That's interesting. Four, five, six, seven, eight. For 8 mana, you gain a 2-3 and 10 life. I mean, as a 2-3 three for 3, this is just fine. But, I mean, if you're kicking this unlimited for 8 mana, and then you're just gaining 10, like, that's, that's going to keep you alive for a little bit. That's nice. I, Kicker is such a nice ability because... It just gives you future, like, it makes sure your top deck, like, if you top deck, top, deck, top deck this on turn eight, it's not dead. If you top deck that on turn six, you can either wait two turns and play it on eight, or you can just play it on three, right? Like, it gives you options. And they're not just random options where you're always going to do the best one. Sometimes they're very skill testing. So, I think Kicker's one of the best mechanics, and I'm glad it came back. Uh, Lanawar Elves, 1-1 one, one for... I, I don't need to go over Lanawar Elves, guys. <laughs> we all know what this guy does. I think it's great that it's back. Uh, it's, I think it was long overdue. I think it's uh, a little more tame than Birds of Paradise for obvious reasons, so it's, I think it's a better card to have back. I think it is interesting that Wizards uh, was like, a really opposed to one-mana Mana Elves, and now they brought this guy back, so that's an interesting philosophy change. But either way, still glad it's here. Seems good. Lana War Envoy. Okay, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna I'm gonna add an image here. Um, if you guys caught the last stream that was live, it's probably not gonna go up on YouTube, so you might not have seen it if you're only watching the YouTube videos. But um, I'm gonna show it here because we just showed the rest of them off. So this seems like the final iteration. This seems like the uh, the last. Here we go. This is beautiful. Look at this beautiful. What a beautiful gem. So now we have an ice tree region. We got the Hungry Howies. This is me and Hunter and Ice. And then he's holding some kettle cooked jalapeno chips. Actually just amazing. I can't even... I can't even understand how this works. Alright. Well, that's incredible. So uh, I'm glad we could share this together. Alright. So, 
Llanowar Lan Envoy. Three mana for a 3-2. That's fine. Tap two, add one mana of any color. You're not going to be playing this in Constructed. I, you, I could see putting this in your limited deck just because it's a cool... I mean, it's a 3-2 for three. The stats aren't the worst. And uh, if you need any sort of fixing, this provides it. It's not a, it's not a blank ability. Llanowar Scout, one three for two. I, there's a lot of one threes for two in this set. You can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Not exciting. One three blocks, whatever. There's a lot of two twos. It'll block your two twos. It won't block your three twos, which there are a lot of as well. Mammoth Spider, five mana for a three five with reach. Poor John Becker. Rest in peace, John Becker. Marwyn, the Nurturer. 1-1 one, one for 3. This is a rare. Legendary Elf. Whenever another Elf knows about a friend under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Marwyn, the Nurturer. Add an amount of mana... Green mana equal to... Add, add an amount of green. Ooh, it doesn't even say the word mana on the card. That's great. Add an amount of green equal to Marwyn's power. <laughs> I don't know what to make of this card. It's kind of like... It's, it's doing its best Elvish... It's like a reverse Elvish Arch Druid. It's like for 3 mana... You're getting an elf that pumps. Um, equal to its power. And it gets bigger based on the number of elves you have. Rather than adding mana equal to the number of elves you have. That gets that gives, makes the other elves you have bigger. It's like a it's like an inverted elvish arch druid. Could still be pretty good. But I don't like paying 3 mana for a 1-1. One, one and then hoping I have a bunch of... Like by the time you play this. You already have 4 elves in play. <laughs> like it's it's just ridiculous. I don't know. I don't think it's a bad card. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this card. The Mending of Dominaria. 5 mana for a rare. Okay so step 1. You play you turn 5. You step 1. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so you're drawing a creature, essentially. So five mana, you play this, you draw a card. Turn six, two more cards, draw another card. Turn seven, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield and shuffle your graveyard into your library. That's interesting. If you have a way to get a bunch of lands in, like Splendid Reclamation, let's be real, Splendid Reclamation didn't see any play in Standard. Right? Like, there were some fringe decks that people were doing, like, where you put all your lands in your graveyard, then you Splendid Reclamation, you get all these lands back, right? But that was mostly popular during Ulamog's day. I also feel like the sagas should be legendary, right? Legendary enchantment sagas. Doesn't that seem better? Because then they interact with all these other permanents. And how are they not legendary, right? Like, the saga only happened once, right? Like, you can't have the mending of dom. You can't have multiple mending of dominarias. I mean, you can. Um, see, again, though, this is return all land cards to your graveyard to the battlefield untapped. Like, all of the lands that are coming into play in this format are untapped. That's interesting. This is also, like, let's not forget, like, the, 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 last, the last ability, the third part, is the, uh, the, the Splendid Reclamation part. The first two are just returning creatures from your graveyard to, the, to your hand. So it's drawing two cards. I also don't hate the idea of playing the Mending of Dominaria. And then on turn seven, when the final counter is removed, when we have a million lands, um, well, that's my point. They interact with historic stuff, but not legendary stuff. But I'd love to be able to hit these off of Kamal's druidic, uh, whatever it's called. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking it up right now because I don't want to have to go back through all these. All right, give me one second, guys. Green. Yeah, Kamal's Druidic Vow, right? So it, it, it hits land or legendary permanent cards. And so this isn't a legendary permanent card, but they could be, right? And so that way you can put Sagas in your Kamal's Druidic Vow deck and still hit them. But, whatever. Either way, I think this card's not terrible. I kind of like it a lot. Um, I think a green card on turn five that gets you two creatures back, it's basically draw two, and then it returns a bunch of lands. I mean, could be good. Multani. Oh, Multani's back. Yavimaya's Avatar. Six mana for a zero zero. Uh, not a great rate. Sorry, Multani. Reach and trample. Well, I don't know what you're reaching for or trampling over with zero power and toughness. Gets plus one plus one for each land you control and each land in your graveyard. Okay. So presumably a six six at least. <laughs> 
Um, you could definitely be ramping with creatures to make him a 4-4 four, four for 6 or whatever, but I, I assume most of the time 6-6 six, six is probably going to be pretty average. Uh, return two land cards... Two lands you control to their owner's hand or return Multani from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so you bounce two lands and you can bring him back. That's actually... It's pretty versatile. This is a reasonable finisher for green, especially with Trample. And it seems to work well with the Mending of Dominaria as well, so... It's not, it's not bad. I kind of like that. Nature's Spiral. Two mana for return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. This is just a fixed regrowth because regrowth was busted. It's not really busted. Um, card's not terrible. Like, you're going to hit most things. Oh, yeah. If you get this guy unlimited, I apologize your, to your opponents. Like, it's just you're not going to – you're going to be doing very well. Very well for yourself. Um. Yeah, this card's fine. I don't think it's great. I it, it it's fine. Regrowth wasn't seeing a ton of pl doesn't see a ton of play as it is. So I don't think Nature's Spiral is really going to see that much play. But it's not a bad card, and I can see I can see why it exists. Pierce the Sky. This card's funny. Uh, two mana. It deals seven damage to target creature with flying. That's a lot. All right. Good times. Good times. So um, yeah, this card's great. This is your plummet in the set. This is your uh, canopy, crushing canopy card in the set, crushing canopy as we call it sometimes. Um, seven damage is a lot. It's probably enough to kill anything in this format. So, it seems like a very random number, but I'm sure they have a reason. A lot of times they make it the the highest toughness of the creature in the format. So if they have a, a seven toughness flyer, make sure it kills that. It doesn't kill Gristlebrand, but I don't think you're going to be fighting against many Gristlebrands in this format. So. Primordial Worm, 6 mana for a 7-6. So this is just Scaled Worm. All right, we'll see you later. I like that art, though. That art's really good. Oh, it does 7 because it references Elder Dragons. Land of War Elves conceal their Balliste in the upper canopy of the forest, ready to clear the skies. Oh, well, it doesn't on the card, but yeah, okay. That seems good. Uh, Sapperling Migration, 2 mana. Create 2 one, one Sapperlings. If the spell is kicked, create 4. So it's 2-2 two, two for... Again, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. Or it's a 4-4 four, for four, four, 6 in 4 bodies. So, eh, okay. Not bad. Not great. Song of Fraley's 2 mana. So, comes into play on turn 2. Until your next turn, creatures add. Creatures you control gain. Tap at 1 mana of any This This is weird because you obviously don't want to play it on turn 2. Otherwise, your creature you're going to be tapped out, right? On turn 2, I play this. Alright, I can't even use this ability because all my creatures are... I don't have any creatures for one, and my mana's tapped for two, so... And even on turn three, for the second counter, you really don't want this on turn three either because you probably don't have any creatures out. So this is a pretty late game card, I think. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. See, now we're talking. So you basically just want this in, like, turn four or five. Um, you put... You put it played on turn four or five. You make a bunch of dudes with your existing dudes on turn... The next turn, you do the same thing, and then the next turn, you just add a bunch of counters. I mean, realistically, this feels kind of win more. If your creatures are big enough that they deal enough damage, you're probably already ahead. And if they're small enough that they're just... Like, if you have a bunch of 2-2s two and they become 3-3s, three I guess the Vigilance is good, though. I don't know. It's not terrible. I, I think it's... Uh, I think it's... a. And, okay, so here's one thing I will say about the sagas. They are unique. Um, every time a unique, a new, a new card type is featured in a game, uh, a lot of times they're very hard to evaluate. So this is a very unique card type. Sagas are very unique, and, and I think a lot of people are, um, are mis-evaluating them. Especially because you have to consider you're in a format where there's going to be a lot of them. So um, keep that in mind. And the other thing is, I don't know what the other thing is. I think it's, I think it's all I'm saying, right? Like, I think, I think these could be better than we, we think. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see, I think, so. Spore Swarm. Spore, swarm, if you will, which is hard to say. Now you get create three 1-1 one -one Sapperlings for four. So right now we have two Sapperlings for two. Three Sapperlings for four, and four Sapperlings for six. This is our, this is our, so two, four, six, and then you have two, three, four. Yeah, okay, so basically those cards just complement each other. 
Um, this is also an instant, which is very good. So that seems pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't know. You're gonna play this in limited. I could see certain narrow corner case scenarios where you play this in constructed. Maybe if there's a, a, an aggressive red deck that has a lot of X ones, then you can just have three blockers on turn four. Seems fine. Spore Crown Thalid, 2-2 two, two for 2. Each other creature you control that's a fungus or sapperling gets... Oh, like a... A fungus lord. A, a sapperling lord. A sapper lord. That's amazing. Steel Leaf Champion. Here's the green card from the cycle. Steel Leaf Champion can be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, and it's a 5-4. This card... This card's a little busted. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be as good as I think it is. Um, it obviously dies to a lot of removal, right? It dies to your, your ultimate price, your Doomblade cards. Um, but 5-4 for 3 mana that can't just be chump blocked is pretty gross. The problem is, this: while this does die to all that removal, um, you have to have that removal, right? So, like, it's one thing for a creature to die to removal. It's another thing if they literally have to die to removal or else you die to the creature, Right, so it does also die to Day of Judgment effects. Good call, good call. Yeah, I don't know. This this one seems like one of the better ones, um, especially because you can play it on turn two now, thanks to Llanowar Elf. So, I don't know. Turn two, five, four is a lot to deal with. Sylvan Awakening. Three mana for a rare. Until the next turn, all lands you control become two-two elemental creatures with reach, indestructible, and haste. They're still lands. That's pretty good. That's not bad. I mean, this is just Rude Awakening, right? It's just Rude Awakening, but it's called Sylvan Awakening now. And, um... I mean, it depends on how many lands you have, right? Like, if you have six lands, this probably isn't worth it. If you have ten lands, attacking for 14 seems pretty okay. They're also indestructible. Why do they get... Why do they get reach? Oh, because it's until your next turn. That's actually great. Yeah, that's actually a nice little caveat because it's until your next turn. So you can actually play it on your turn if your opponent has like a million dudes and you get blockers. That's actually pretty cool. So it buys you a turn. Like that's really versatile. That's a nice little caveat that this card has uh, that gives it a little more versatility than it normally would, which is great because otherwise it's solely used on, a, on offense. Now it can be used as defense, which is great because whenever you give a card that marginal amount of... of um, of use outside of what you what you normally would expect. Um, you're just making you're just giving it so much more value. Terial, territorial Allosaur. Four mana for a five five. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, it fights another target creature. All right, so it's a five five for four, which is another, again a great rate, especially um. Well, this guy's rare too. Or you can play a 5-5 five, five for 7 that fights another dude. I feel like this could be uncommon, right? This doesn't feel rare. I mean, if you attacked with him, Settle wouldn't blow you out because you're literally just replacing your lands, right? So that doesn't really make... I mean, like, if I attack with 6 lands and they play Settle the Wreckage, I'll just get 6 lands back. <laughs> so, I mean... You know, you break even at worst. Like, they tr you traded a Settle for a Sylvan Awakening. That doesn't seem like a blowout, necessarily. 5-5 five, five for 4 makes it rare? Interesting. I don't know if that's true anymore. But I'll, I'll believe it. Thorn Elemental. 7. This is also a classic. I'm surprised this guy is is, uh, is, is uncommon now. Five five a seven mana seven seven for five, for seven. You may have Thorn Elemental Science combat damage as though it weren't blocked. So you just attack. So it's basically trample forever, except you don't kill the other guy. Um, <laughs> schooled Elo <laughs> was not my intent to school you. I just wanted to make sure the situation was clear. Uh, five four for three was definitely rare. Yeah, Seal of Champion was one thousand percent rare. That would be insane if this if Steel Leaf Champion was not rare. I would have some words. Um, yeah, so Thorn Elemental, you just attack with your 7-7. Seven, seven, they block with 7 power worth of guys. You can either kill their guys, or you can have as, as him assign his combat damage to the player, as if it weren't blocked. But then their guys live, so... You can't have both ways, but they can't chump block it, really, because then you just deal the 7 to their face. 
Untamed Kavu. How to settle and interact with indestructible creatures, though? They're not they're not destroying them. Settle like settle exiles the creatures, it doesn't destroy them, so indestructible doesn't matter. Untamed Kavu, 2-2 two, two for two. Again, as you may have noticed. I wonder if they put so many 2-2s two, for two in this set just to just because it's a Dominaria and they're trying to uh hearken your grizzly your the most grizzly bear uh nostalgia you could ever feel. Um so Vig two, 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 two for two with vigilance and trample. Already you have you have me you have me cooked. And then it gets three one one counters. So it's either a two two for two or a five five for five with vigilance and trample. This card's great. I'll first pick this guy. Verdant Force, what a classic. Eight mana for a seven seven. At the beginning of each upkeep, put a one one saprolink creature token into play. Um Ooh, look at this templating. Create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. Not put a 1-1 one, one creature green sapperling creature token into the battlefield under your control. Create one. Oh, that's so much more elegant. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so this card this card was great back in the day. You would cheat this guy into play with something like, uh, you know, whatever you, whatever you use back in the day. A reanimation. And um, a lot of people wouldn't know that you would make a, a token on both on both turns. So you're just like furred and forest. Oh my god, Chris, I love that a lot. Um Yeah, so you would make one on your on their turn, then on your turn, then on their turn, then on your turn. So it's a lot of a lot of sweet stuff going on there. Um yeah, Ferdent Force is great. I, I'm not sure if it's gonna be constructed playable in, in the in the world now, but I like that it exists in standard, which is a weird thing to say. Wild onslaught, four mana, put a one one counter on each creature you control. Okay. Eight mana. Put two one one creatures on each creature you control instead. Well, for eight mana, wasn't this same card just six mana in Rivals of Ixalan? I mean, granted, you're getting the versatility here, right? So you're getting you're getting the ability to play it for four mana instead of either six mana or eight mana. So, you know, I, I don't know. This card is you're gonna you're, oh, and it's also instant. Worth noting, this card you're gonna play one thousand percent of the time. You get it unlimited because even putting a one one counter on uh, your creatures for four mana is great. You will always be able to... I mean, like, if you're ever able to kick it, it's just fantastic. You'll always kick it if you can, so. And the last green card, Yavamaya Sapherd. Three mana, 2-2. Two, two. Ooh, Gray Ogre Territory. When Yavamaya Sapherd enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one green... Oh, never mind. So this is just the same... This is the Merfolk that was just in... Um, Rivals of Ixalan. The 2-2 two, two Merfolk, they made a 1-1 one, one Merfolk as well. So this is fine. Whatever, you're going to play this card as well. Three power for three mana under, over two bodies is just great, especially when they're in a tribe that's relevant and limited. So, All right, cool. Green looks pretty sweet. Green looks spicy. The The rates on these green cards are real high. Or not a real, real like the, the quality of the, of the rates is real high. The, the rates themselves are real low. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Be sure to check out my Patreon if you want to if you want to try to support the stream or the, the YouTube videos by in some way. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, it's Frank. It's patreon.com slash Frank Lepore. And be sure to check out the other set reviews once they go up or the ones that have gone up uh, every 9 p.m. Eastern uh, during this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.